Today is Saturday, the 11th of March, 2023, and we are all gathered here for the 73rd session on Mindfulness for Beginners from Nisaranavane Forest Monastery. And uh, today, uh, to our benefit, we have uh, Venerable Sister Rohini uh, representing Nisaranavane Forest Monastery joining into today's session uh, to provide us with uh, much valued insight and advice on how to uh, further our mindful practice. So on behalf of all of us, uh, I would like to uh, welcome with much respect Venerable Sister Rohini for uh, into this program, uh, into this session. And I would also, uh, along with that, I would also like to welcome all of those uh, who are joining through the uh, Zoom session and also through the uh, live streaming uh, via the um, Satipasala uh, Foundation's uh, Facebook page. So with that, I would give you a, a, a small rundown of uh, how the program will proceed. First, we will have the uh, in-session mindfulness practice uh, to get you accustomed into the session. And then we will proceed with the uh, talk on mindfulness for uh, today. And then we will move on to the question and answer session where we will present the reports received for today and also provide you the uh, chance to uh, uh, present your own questions on mindfulness uh, in a verbal format. And then we will uh, wrap up the program for today. So with that, I would uh, uh, invite uh, Venerable Sister to commence with the uh, session proceedings, uh, starting off with in-session mindfulness practice. Over to our Venerable Sister. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Sister. Okay. okay. Thank you, Namanda. Um, good day, everyone. As usual, um, today we are here. So the first thing in the program, usually doing a mindful activity. So I think uh, today we are going to do mindful uh, walking. So walking is, we all know, walking is a good exercise. Uh, for the body. But adding that mindfulness into that is um, giving the extra, oh, it, I can say, enrich the advantage. It's uh, because the mindfulness gives you your brain exercise. So when you walk mindfully, that your body and the brain, or body and the mind, both get exercise. Both have, um, yeah, uh, kind of uh, cleansing. So, in keeping that mind, we will start the mindful walking session uh, because uh, that if you can keep that mind in mind, then uh, you can see the benefit of that. So, seeing that benefit you will have a more courage or more um, effort to do this. So we'll start uh, saying that uh, I would uh, remind you for mindful walking, you can use uh, the best is sand bath. Uh, sometimes it is good green grasses or something like that. Um, Otherwise, just normal soil surface, just normal earth. Or at least tile or cement. Carpet floor is better than uh, tile or cement. So whatever you can uh, find at this time, please use. And um, for sitting, not like sitting, we need to have a, a path. At least 15, 20 steps you can walk. So choose some path, whatever the path you choose, so maybe on the tile floor or, or sand um, path or whatever it is, uh, you can stand one end of the path. Standing one end, you can close your eyes and observe your bodily feelings. When you close your eyes, it, it 
is a little bit easy than opening eyes. So close your eyes at the end of the path and observe your feelings. Feeling that you feel and that you recognize that um, you are standing. You are not sitting. You are not lying. You are not walking. So among those four postures, now you are standing. So you may feel that um, the body weight on your feet or maybe you can feel that uh, the straight body. Whatever the feeling. If you are outside, you may feel that uh, the breeze, the cold air or the warm air, wherever you are. So whatever you, are, you feel, just observe it. Just try to focus uh, on the feeling. So close eyes and observe them. Then in a minute or even before that for a practitioner, your mind will um, have a collectiveness to your body. So with that calmness, you can start, you can open your eyes and start walking. So the walking is um, need to be in a comfortable way. I mean, um, it, we can't say that you need to go fast or you need to go slow. Uh, there's nothing uh, we can say about the uh, speed need to be uh, chosen by you. It is, you know, sometimes the morning um, speed is different from afternoon, even the one person for one person. So choose your uh, speed according to your body knowledge, according to what your body says. So from one end to the other end, Walk, observing how you feel, how you feel that I am walking. I'm not sitting, I'm not standing, or I'm not lying. I'm just now walking. So maybe you will feel that uh, the body weight is... Um, Shifting from one leg to the other. Or maybe you feel that uh, the knee, bending knee. Or maybe you feel that uh, the, the surface of roughness or the coldness or the hotness or whatever you feel um, from the surface. You can focus on anything that is prominent. Anything that is prominent, take it as an object, object to focus. Saying that, it is not easy. While you are walking, your mind will roam around. While you are, while you are walking, your mind will walk somewhere else. Or, uh, without even notice. So whenever that happens, remember it is your responsibility, your job right now is to keep that mind in the um, given object. So given object is walking feet. So walking posture. So remember that anytime you notice that my mind is in somewhere else, Maybe it is sound. Uh, maybe it is um, just forming with thoughts or some other things. But whenever you notice that, please bring your attention to walking feet or walking body. So that is some usually simple way of doing that. So in addition, I can I would like to add something more if you are if you feel or if you find that it is difficult to keep your mind in one place or keep your mind in um, the walking body or walking feet so you can use a counting method counting method is 
then uh, you put your left leg count one and the, when you put the right leg count same as one not two so there's the a pair one left foot and the right foot also one and the next time then the left foot fo come forward it is two and the right one is two again so three and three again likewise you can count up to five or six not for long count up to uh, five or six and then start from the beginning from one two like that so you can use that also sometimes it is um, uh, easy in that way so you have something to um, focus on, some another thing to focus or sometimes uh, we say uh, if you can walk like a catwalk you know maybe you know everyone knows the catwalk who's modeling uh, people are walking so you can use uh, keeping a mind in a single um, line so this is my line and walk on that like a cat so uh, those things are just as strategies to keep your mind in one place so you can use uh, anything anything uh, suitable for you so likewise now we can practice for a few minutes until bell rang i think
okay. So if, if there's no any bell ringing, so we can stop and um, stop the mindful walking. Okay, then um, the next event is the talk, isn't it? Yes, Manuel. Okay. Um, as I came to know that um, now this program has a topic given for a month. So this month topic is um, dealing with conflict. Dealing with conflict is, uh, is the topic. Uh, as a human or even as a, any being, we have to face a lot of things. We have to face, as a human, uh, economical crises, health crises, um, other uh, natural disasters, so many things you have to face. So among those things, the dealing with conflict, this um, very hard and uh, very painful thing, actually, because it makes you sad, makes you angry, um, that leads you, on, you know, um, according to Kalahavivada Sutta, it, it leads you for quarrels and, uh, you know, other disputes. So dealing with conflict is a very, very important uh, topic, actually. Uh, in this world, while we are living, in every relationship, once in a while or sometimes more often, uh, we will have uh, conflicts. Conflicts between, um, within family, husband and wife conflict between uh, parents and children, conflicts between friends or in the workplace. There are so many, uh, I mean, if there is any relationship, there is, um, we can expect a uh, conflict because everyone is not um, thinking in the same way. All are not the same. So we have different views. Each and everyone have, has the different um, views. So what is happening, I think my view is the right one. Uh, that someone else think yeah, that person's view is the right one. So it is the beginning of conflict. Only the view. But uh, other than that, um, the views coming through your defilements, if we say, so you are proud, if you are a proud person, if you have more conceit, um, that uh, person have more conflicts, I think. Whatever the reason, the conflicts is a uh, unavoidable thing in the society. So we need to learn how to deal. It is very important. So conflicts arise with this view most of the time. For example, if I say like this, just imagine Joan and me working for a company. So Joan wants to... Um, Uh, see a project running. But me, I don't like that project. So I have some um, arguments or maybe some uh, views or my opinions. I'm, I'm showing those things. That means the Jones idea is against mine or my idea is against Jones. Whatever the reason, that there's a conflict. But remember, the, the reason was the project. I don't like that project, but don't like that project. But ultimately, when you go 
into the hundred level, deep level, there is no project at the end, then the conflict between John and me. That is the problem. Because if, uh, if, uh, if it is only the project, then we can discuss. John and I can discuss why I don't like, or what is the pros and cons. No, we can discuss. But when it comes to the level that the conflict is between the John and me, that is the problem. Because most of the conflicts are in that level. We forget the subject. We forget the matter. We forget the reason for the conflict. So these are, actually these are the problem. This is the um, hurtful feeling. So this country, if you if you go to the internet, uh, search for how to deal with country, you will get thousands of thousands uh, opinions, ideas. You follow this, you follow that. You know, the, the lot of lot of ideas, lot of um, uh, opinions. But still, we need we have to talk about the dealing with conflicts. Why? Why is this? Because those things, uh, people can say, I heard many times people say, even uh, very well-known people says, okay, let go. I'm asking you, and I'm asking myself sometimes, can we let go many things? Can we? People, people can say, okay, let it go, let it go. But we can't. It is not easy. It is not easy to let go. Why? Because there is a me. I. And I, like I said before, I am John. So I, I have uh, conceit. I don't want to... Um, um, my pride actually. My pride says, okay, it is not okay for someone like me. If I say something, I, 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 others will should listen. So if we put that away, the myself, I am, little bit away, then the, uh, there is a easy, or there is a um, no hard feeling actually. It is easy. It is um, rather than letting go, accepting, accepting that. The, this is the matter, this is the conflict, not me or someone else. The conflict arises from the uh, project or arises from the view or arises from the uh, um, relationship. How you deal with the other relationships or how uh, you um, talk, whatever the reason. So if you can. Um, recognize the conflict. The most important thing is my, my, according to my knowledge, if you can recognize the conflict, what it is, it says Sarati. If you can recognize the conflict, the origin of the conflict, the cause of the conflict, then you can analyze it. So analyzing part in, in that part, you need to uh, keep I or myself a little bit away. If you want to analyze, if you want to analyze the conflict, uh, then you have to put myself away, a little bit away, and it um, in an open uh, plate. So that openness is need. That openness, we know that openness is, is must. But the thing is, we can't do that. Why? Why we can't do that? Sometimes I, I ask people, when they come to um, us, we give them um, five precepts or, or eight precepts or whatever the uh, code of conducts. Whatever the religion, there are some um, like precepts. 
but every time they get heat, but they can't protect. As they said, okay, I, I am going to protect, I am going to uh, keep um, this precept, uh, but they can't because they are not mindful. If you are mindful, then you can, your mind will say, okay, don't do this because you are a five preceptor or because you are eight preceptor. But you, if you are not mindful, it will not uh, say. Your mind will not uh, give you a reminder. Likewise, in conflicts also, if you are not mindful, then, you know, when I go through a website or when you go through a website, you will, the, those uh, opinions will say that you have to have good communication, you have to be a good listener you know, to solve the problems or, or, or deal with the conflicts. And, and there are so many things. I'm just asking, can we be a good communicator? Can we be a good listener without being a mindful practitioner, without being a mindful um, uh, person? Because when something happens in between, in, in the workplace or at home or in the, uh, in the road or where, where, wherever, when something happens, if you are not mindful, the, all the feelings, emotional feelings come forward. So those emotional feelings cover with all the other things like, you know, you are a good person, you are a respectable person, um, you are a valuable person. Or at home, I am the mom, or I am the dad. I should not behave like this. So, you know, so many things. I we need to um, be careful when you are talking, when we are uh, listening in a in a conflict situation. But thing is, can we do that without mindfulness? Can we do that? It is not easy. It is not easy unless you are mindful. So, without be, if you want to solve a problem or solve a conflict. You need to be mindful first of all. So if you are not mindful, then you can't analyze or you can't recognize the um, source of the problem. You can't recognize the um, uh, problem itself actually. Otherwise what will happen, we put myself into that problem and analyze it in that way. So if I put myself into the problem and analyze, then it is bias. It is not um, um, every every uh, people. It is it will not uh, good for every people. Every um, yeah. So if I or if you can put away myself or uh, being uh, this uh, conflict with me and the other people, or me and my husband, or me and my children, or whatever it is, if I can put away the myself or the other people, there's a myself, if there's a myself, then there's other people also. So if we can put away that, that um, myself and others from the conflict, then it is easy. So in, 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 uh, in uh, Buddhist Concepts actually, Sarati, Vivarati, Uttana, Karoti, they say. Then when, when you recognize there is a conflict, if you can realize or if you can analyze it, the conflict, There is an opportunity to it is to overcome. Open enough to look at them, you will not see. So if you are not open enough, that means you need to put away yourself from that uh, position, that uh, conflict. For example, if I get this, um, okay. Now we, we just before we had a mindful walk. So I ask you all to do mindful walk 
and ask you to observe the bodily feeling. When you walk, observe your bodily feeling. Keep your mind on bodily feelings. So what is happening? What has happened actually? So while you are walking, you need to keep, you, you need to focus on the body, the walking body. But does mind agree with it? No. Mind want to walk around in some other places with some people or some uh, chain of thoughts. This um, the mind doesn't want to keep the uh, keep focusing on the walking body. Mind doesn't need it. Mind doesn't want it actually. So there is a conflict. There is a conflict between you and your mind while you are walking, while you are practicing the walking, uh, mindful walking. So that conflict, if you, are, if you are not mindful enough, then there's a conflict. So that means you are sad. You, maybe you feel, okay, I, I am the only one. I can't uh, keep my mind focused in one place. Uh, this is happening to me. You know, so many things will um, think. So many things will come to your mind thinking that only I am the only one. I, I, I am the only one that can't um, practice like this. So everybody else can. So likewise, there's a conflict in between you and your mind too while we are practicing mindfulness. Even sitting position, if you are, if you are focusing on sitting posture or if you are focusing on breath, the breath is not always the mind focus. Mind is roaming around. Mind is uh, entangled with the chain of thoughts. But what is happening? The mind is in conflict with you. So it's, it's the same thing. It is the same thing happening in outside. So in inside you, there's there are so many conflicts every time. What you want to do is not what mind is doing, but what, what mind is um, uh, giving, or, or what mind is um, uh, how do you call it? presenting. So just imagine if you can't make that mind keep whatever you, wherever you want, if you can't do that. So how can we deal the conflict with other people? This is my mind. I say it is mine. So I do things according to what mind says. So, but there is a conflict. If we give some um, work to do, the mind doesn't listen. If you are not practicing well, if you are not if you are a, 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 a beginner, especially, uh, there there are always conflicts. So look at when you practice mindfulness. Look at that conflicts. So even for, not only for the beginners, even for advanced people, advanced practitioners. Have those conflicts. That's why those uh, Kamatahan uh, Varta, the reports are there because uh, there are conflicts. What is happening is not accepted by mind. The mind is saying, okay, this is happened, uh, but I can't believe or I can't accept it. Is something wrong? That is all the reports are saying. So there is a conflict also. So First, try to deal, first try to find the way to deal the conflicts in between, within you. Those conflicts, uh, if you can find easily or if you can put effort to find those uh, conflicts and um, um, do without uh, uh, complaining. So... I'm not saying that you should not write reports. I'm saying um, that, that all the reports are coming because of that conflict in between you and your mind. So
So likewise, those mind and you are the one who is dealing with the other conflicts. So just um, don't think we can let go. Uh, just people say, okay, let go. On, on in the, if there is a conflict, uh, then uh, a mediator can involve and um, they can say, okay, just ignore it or just uh, uh, let go or just accept it. It is not easy. I'm saying if you want to deal with conflict, practice the mindfulness. Practice mindfulness. The mindfulness itself, um, going through a journey, it takes you a journey that to deal with um, conflict within you. Those practice or, or, or that practice is very, very helpful for dealing with other conflicts. So my, um, today, that's what I wanted to say actually. So if you are able to um, practice mindfulness daily basis for a few, maybe 30 minutes, one hour or so, then you are uh, having a better communication skills also. Without, without put your more effort to communication, that mindfulness practice itself give you a courage and um, ability to have a good communication skills. I mean, good communication means not uh, not the like a uh, uh, good you know, don't need to um, put uh, more effort to uh, practice that how do I communicate just practice mindfulness then it will guide you to be a good communicator the mindfulness itself will guide you to uh, a good listener if you are a good listener and if you are a good communicator the most conflicts can uh, resolve because um, most of the conflicts are begin with um, wrong communication or wrong listening. For example, most of the time when we talk with other people, just notice, if you are not noticed so far, just uh, try to notice that. Whenever we say something, for even for children, if we say something, they listen only the beginning of the sentence. The end, they don't know what they say. And we also doing the same. We don't know what the end of the sentence. And before that, after listening to the beginning, we um, put our how called, thoughts in there, in between. So that means when you put your thoughts in there, this is the beginning of conflict. So before going to deal, our local Swami Nasa always says that the Veda Kamata Vada Heda Kamata, the precaution, it is the best. To be uh, uh, like that, the mindfulness is the best um, remedy or best um, medicine. So saying that, I, I'm not sure um, how long I need to uh, talk about this. Whatever, what I want to say is first deal with your conflict within you. While you are doing mindfulness practice, you do mindfulness practice. And while you are doing mindfulness practice, um, deal with that conflicts within you, the you and your mind. So that the practice leads you to be a good listener and a good communicator. And uh, uh, that means that good communication skills, and also uh, that uh, leadership skills will help you to 
um, guide through conflict situation. So be mindful, practice mindfulness, and uh, deal with your conflicts within you, and that uh, will help you to um, resolve or uh, face to conflicts with other people. So saying that, I am uh, winding up. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Venerable Sister, for that uh, insightful uh, talk on mindfulness, uh, on on the uh, subject of um, dealing with conflict, a very um, related topic for our everyday uh, life. So uh, I hope all of you gathered uh, a great insight there. I would like to now invite um, Lushani to uh, commence with the Q&A session for today's uh, program. Thank you, Lushani. Thank you, Ramanka. I was a very venerable Rohini. And again, thank you very much for that very insightful talk. Um, and I think uh, we have one report today. Uh, before I start with the report, I just want to very quickly uh, give some instructions. I think it's very useful. You wanted us to practice mindfulness. So just for the beginners who are joining the, the session today, we have some uh, guidance on how to develop the mindfulness. Uh, so I believe uh, my uh, Rajika, are you going to scare, share the screen? Otherwise I can share the screen as well to just to give the guidance notes. Thank you, Rajika. So as you can uh, see, uh, just some very basic instructions. We, there are two videos that you can watch, uh, one on mindful walking and one on mindful sitting. There are the links. I think Namant has posted the links on uh, the chat as well. So please download it and watch it. And this will give you some very good guidance on how to develop your mindfulness through mindful walking and mindful sitting practice. Um, I would say start with at least a good 10 or 15 minutes to start with and then increase it slightly. It's really good if you can get an hour reach every day of both mindfulness walking and mindfulness sitting practice. Um, once you've done that, uh, whatever, whenever you start to do your practice, put down the notes into a report. Venerable Rohini mentioned this in her talk as well. It's really good to have a reflection report as you start your practice just putting down sort of what you, your experiences through the, uh, both the mindful walking and the mindful sitting practice. Um, and then you can send those reports uh, through two means so that we can read it out during the session. As you can see there, there is a Google form that you can fill, or you can also email it to uh, beginnersnv uh, at gmail.com. And then we will read out the reports and then, or you can put out any questions you have and Vendrupa Rohini or uh, Bhante Dhamma will uh, address those reports and give you further guidance on how to develop the practice. Uh, like I said, continue to develop your mindful practice uh, according to the advice given uh, then during these sessions. Uh, and that concludes uh, the guidance on the on how to develop a mindfulness practice, a daily mindfulness practice. Uh, with that, uh, Venerable Rohini, Avasarai, there is uh, one report today. Uh, so we, if we can stop sharing the screen, uh, Namantha, so I can read the report. Thank you. Um, let me just get the report up on screen. Um, so there's uh, first, uh, there's one report for today. I will start the report now. It's on mindful sitting, sat on the cushion and adjusted the posture into a balanced position. As usual, a quick body scan took place, then became aware of the breath around the nostrils area prominently. In breath was cooler and out breath was warmer. Attention stayed with beginning, middle and the end of each breath for a while. Became aware of thoughts arising from time to time and how these passed away. 
mind naturally returned to the sensations of breath. Breath was shorter and subtle now. Notice the slight movement back and forth. This continued in the background while the attention returned to the breath. Noted pulsating energy moving through the body a couple of times. Awareness returned to the breath. Felt a sense of peace and lightness. Continued to note the breath. Sat for 50 minutes. When reflecting after the practice, it was noted that while the energy was there to sit for longer, the eyes opened after 50 minutes, which is the familiar period of sitting practice in the past couple of months. Mindful walking. Walked on wooden floor. The part of the path had a thick rug too. Soles of each foot noted prominently at the beginning. Noted the temperature and texture. Difference of the wood and of the rug. Steps on the rug felt softer, warmer, and the arch of the heel also had contact with the thick rug. Steps on the wood felt colder, harder, and arch of heel had no contact with the wood. Lightness of the lifted foot and the weight of the foot placed on the floor also noted. Thoughts would come and go, but there was no urge to hook onto these. Walking had a more natural rhythm now. Walked for 25 minutes. Mindfulness during the day. Having taken on board the suggestion last week from Wendell Bante, decided to note the conflicting senses while trying to watch the inner struggle without getting carried away by these. It wasn't easy, as became aware of how easy it was for one sense to fight for attention to itself over other senses. For example, while walk, uh, walking from home, attention was grabbed by the sense of sound, doorbell ringing. Almost automatically moved away from the computer and walked to open the door. On the way, noted the thoughts bubbling in the mind, wondering who's at the door. Is it a delivery? Is it an inconvenient time right now? The work needs to be finished soon. Why couldn't another family member attend to the doorbell, etc., etc.? After returning to the work task, mind became aware of these mental proliferations, which served no purpose. Sense of sound was highlighted when the doorbell rang, but a more peaceful intervention would have been to simply open the door, attend to whatever it was, and to return to the task at hand again calmly. Instead, a sense of thought took over with unnecessary storytelling and experiencing the associated emotions of agitation. In another event, the inner conflict was about not wanting to go to a musical show where the tickets were already booked. When originally asked a couple of months ago by my husband, I had agreed to this. So felt under pressure to go. Suddenly the awareness of not wanting to go to the show feels like this came up in mind. With this awareness, tightness in the shoulders and the facial muscles relaxed. Going to the show was not seen as waste of time anymore, but as an opportunity to experiment further with what senses would grab attention over others during the event. Dear Bante, look forward to your valuable feedback. Much merit to Bante and the organizers. Avasarai Vendrabha Rohini, that's the end of the report. I think it appears, uh, Vendrabha Rohini, that was the end of the report. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? I, we can hear you, yes. Okay, I, I did please, little while. Okay. Um, that's a, actually a good report uh, that uh, my talk, it's remind me, that I my talk, I also said that within the conflict, in, 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 in your, within your conflict, need to deal with. So it is explaining it very well in here, uh, in day-to-day -day life and mindfulness. So how you deal with that uh, thought, chain of thoughts. 
and uh, it is but seeing that recognizing that that conflict uh, within you is the most important thing so for a practitioner my mindfulness practitioner that seeing it so while you are walking from uh, working place to the door how many thoughts um, unnecessary thoughts chain of thoughts came to you so that is the that is the reality that is the reality that seeing it within you is the best thing a mindfulness practitioner can um, observe so that so now you know how, how is your mind now you know what is happening within you so take it as advantage and um, practice more diligently and don't look at them as with, with judgment it is wrong or it is not good or what i thought about people other people uh, about the family members or whatever it is don't um, judge those thoughts just observe them as it is so if you're going to judge then that country that what i um, talk about in my talk uh, is coming through then so if you are judgmental about your thoughts then frustration is arising that is uh, not good for the practice so without any frustration the thoughts are thoughts it comes and go so just try to observe them just try to observe without um, uh, judgment yeah, or without you know, giving any um, uh, gravity or if this is good thought this is bad thought or this is a uh, neutral thought you don't need to just look at them just be mindful about the thoughts uh, about that uh, mention about um, day to day practice and uh, uh walking meditation if you can a uh, little bit improve the to in, from 25 minutes to at least uh, 30 minutes 35 minutes a uh, little bit um, more uh, one minute at a time if you can uh, do that it, it will be you will benefit it actually if you can uh, improve the time so you can uh, increase the time um, walking time and the other thing is uh, if you say that arch you don't feel the arch that's true but you know you don't feel that that is the uh, miracle in there so even though you don't feel it you know that so you we think usually um the whatever we feel or the feelings we observe but there is no feelings but there is no contact with the um, arch and the uh, wherever you walk but still you know it so this is the power of mindfulness actually so please keep on like that and if you can please increase the walking time uh, and uh, if you can walk before sitting uh, and i think uh, you are progressing good thank you venerable rohini so with that we conclude uh, today's reports um now we can open this session to q and a so if you have any questions please uh, raise your zoom hand and uh, we will give you the opportunity to ask venerable rohini your questions anyone who wants to ask a question yes uh, i can see samantha you have raised your hand uh, please go ahead you can unmute yourself and ask your question thank you thank you dashani um thank you venerable for taking my question um i really enjoyed today's session as well um the guidance and the talk was really helpful uh but my question is just about just generally just the, when everything is mind you know we had to be aware mindful um now i understand um and i think obviously this mindfulness will increase um as we practice um with the love, the beautifully guided uh, meditation instructions that venerable explained today that was very helpful and also along with the 
breathing breath, uh, meditation that we do as well, hopefully every day, uh, try to practice. But the problem is now with conflict. Um, so if we are aware, now Venerable said that, be aware of the conflict within the mind. So in situations like when you're, obviously we are communicating with parties at work and everything we had to come to solutions for projects, et cetera, for example, um, there are difference in opinions. Um, and so say if I'm aware of, okay, there's, of my conflict, say my conflicts is coming through anger or hatred or jealousy or whatever it is, then I can say, okay, that's my ego, right? I'm aware of it and I let it go. You know, that's not, it's, it's you know, not uh, helping the situation. But however, if the other party, I'm not saying I'm right, but if the other party is coming with a really, uh, I don't know, uh, not, uh, with a very different opinion and a very uh, unreasonable and it's obvious, um, you know, and so I've, how can one just accept and let it go you know knowing um with i mean there's it has to be it's just not mindful there has to be a bit of a uh inject a bit of reasoning and maybe the right view or a sort of a wisdom what is the right view in a way and how to approach this um conflict in a way that is um not just just merely accepting and letting it go um that that's what I was just wondering. <laughs> Bante. Yes. I mean that venerable yes. sister. Thank you. Good question. <laughs> because um think I will put this in. Uh now you are not um, I'm I'm not saying you are not a good practitioner, but you need to practice mm. more and more to yes, deal. I do. Yeah, mm. so when to deal with outsiders. Mm. So we can say, you know, let it go. You can't do that. No. Yeah. I can say, or someone else can say, or manager maybe can say, okay, let it go. But you can't. It's not easy. That's why we practice. We practice mindfulness. So through that, we find uh, the reasons. You know, like I think that report, U.S. report, eh? No, 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 that wasn't mine. In, no. that, in this report, the, 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 the person um, described about the thought, the chain of thoughts. So mm. the, the, that is happening every time, you know, every single minute, every single second, that is what's happening in, in, within us. So if we can find it easily, if we can focus on that uh, chain of thoughts, then we mm. can have a good communication skills and good listening skills. So if the other part of the conflict, you know, the other uh, party of the conflict is arrogant maybe, maybe it's not a reasonable um, thinking, whatever it is, if we are mindful, if we are uh, mindful about the thoughts, the chain of thoughts, what will happen next, so then we can use Mekta, Karuna, Mudita, Upeka. It is the four things. Uh, mm. I, I'm not thinking that this is the uh, this is a uh, religious uh, program, but I need to say this. Mm. This is what we need to uh, do because as soon as we recognize the conflict, as soon as we can analyze the conflict. So that analyzing part is happening within you, inside you. So if you can observe it, if you can um, be a mindful person uh, about those thoughts, then mm. the the practitioner, I mean, skilled practitioner can put either metta, karuna, mudita, or upeka in forward. Mm. So it yeah. is, it is, uh, it takes time actually. Mm. You need to be patient and practice more. Um, then you will realize how effective that the mindfulness, the power of mindfulness is. Um, uh, yeah, it is. You can't explain in words. So you need to practice mm. it and um, experience it. Like I see what you're the, saying. Whenever, yes. Yeah, whenever the conflicts happen, the mindfulness needs to be a forerunner. Saying, 
this is what is happening this is what happening and this is the thoughts you will expect and you know that thought is coming um, the anger thoughts hated thoughts the sad thoughts you know the the one after another one after another it's coming so you are just uh, uh, um how do you call it? um watching it so mm. if you can put that mindfulness into that level then it is easy but before that we can say okay let go or just accept it is no it is not easy i am not saying it is easy uh, we can say people can say uh, mm. but the practice and practice is the most important thing while you are practice you will you will see yourself the improvement mm. i see Even what you're saying venerable yes mm. Mm. maybe Even at this stage sorry sorry venerable no go ahead please sorry i was going to say uh, you just uh, reminded me so the more i practice the more i be able to my if my mindfulness is um increased i'll be able to be more mindful on the situation and yes. then even if it's um, uh without getting angry if i have an angry thought without lashing out or uh, thing i'll be able to if i'm mindful just walk away to have a calm mind then the solution will come to me eventually hopefully yeah because uh, with, just, think, just think when you are angry but the, the other person is doing making you angry but mm. you are angry you think yourself you know that you are you feel that the 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 redness and the heat is coming up and uh, you feel yes. uh, the bodily changes and you mm. see the um, thoughts are coming but mm. if you are mindful you are mindful on that those things so what is happening mm. the other person whatever they says you can smile you can have a good um, you know that um, not the aggressive face mm. so can you think yes. of uh, if someone can blame or if someone can scold you when you are smiling mm, no. no no yeah no that is yeah. the metta karuna mudita upeka it's calm. you can't practice or oh, i am i, I am I'm practicing everyone is so patteva or be happy and you no know, it is not what i am saying when you mm. are practicing mindfulness it comes automatically because you are observer good observer mm. thank you venerable that that will inject in that's really helpful thank you buddha sarmai thank you thank you samantha Uh, I can see Namanta has raised his hand. Namanta, over to you. Oh, thank you, Lushani. I I appreciate Samantha's uh, question here because it's connected to the uh, title of the uh, session today, my conflict. And I think in a professional setting, if somebody has a um, very different opinion of, of what has to be done on on a particular work task, I'm talking about something that happens happens in a work environment where you are working in a salaried job. then you cannot run away saying okay i'm going to let it go this and that then it will reflect badly on your performance when your performance uh, uh, checks are going to happen and so i think uh, uh, you if if you feel that you are not uh, in line with the uh, what in what the other person is saying sometimes it could be immediate manager then you need to assess your options clearly uh whether it is to take a, a very uh, front frontal approach uh, by showcasing your intentions your uh, the constraints that apply to your performance those sort of things or whether it is uh, uh, you need to uh, observe the process a bit further and take an action later or whether you need to um, reach out to human resources uh, personnel um because uh, many times i've uh, worked in i've had this conflict where there were uh, you know kind of mal intention parties uh, playing around with the uh, the work tasks uh, given to us and then what happened was uh, uh, mindfulness helped me to um, better decide what are the options to take and assess the balance of uh, um, my strengths and the situational uh, threats at that time and take a very um very uh, subtle approach to res- get these things resolved without uh, you know kind of uh, uh, surrendering too much to their uh, uh 
bad intentions I, I might say because in some corporate workplaces you do get person multiple personalities different personalities as uh, general manual said so i think uh, mindfulness does not make you kind of go lame and say i let go and i uh, shut down my eyes i shut my eyes i just uh, you know freeze myself and become uh, uh, un- insensitive or I think we've lost a connection from Namanta. So I can see Panchani has raised her hand. Uh, Panchani, do you want to ask your question? Panchani, you can unmute yourself. Panchani, you can ask your question. Hello, uh, Lushani, and hello, Venerable um, Rohini. Uh, I just wanted to share some of my experiences because what Venerable Rohini said today, <clears throat> I have experienced it um, Within the last week, um, when when I was so mindful at one moment, my metta karuna mudita upeka did come to the forefront, uh, and that came automatically. And I completely agree with what Venerable Rohini said. And I just wanted to share one of my experiences within last week. Um, I experienced a really strong heartache, like I have not experienced in my life in my last week. And within that week. Um, I realized I was burning like this this happened with my family. I was burning inside and I was burning for a whole day and I was just watching my burning like I was carrying on with all my daily tasks like normal I was going to work but I was burning so I was watching my burning but I was able to carry on with my burning um, but then I actually analyzed like when Rohini said I started to analyze why why am I burning why am I losing my peace I have been very peaceful in my mind, like very less conflict for a very long time. Um, And then I realized it's actually my cravings coming into forefront, like my cravings towards my family members, you know. That is my avidya here, uh, my ignorance. Um, So then I detached. I detached from my craving. And then I started to look at it in another angle. And then my metta, Karuna Mudita Upeka, did come into forefront. And my metta was so strong and... I was able to, like, <laughs> even the conflict got resolved automatically. Um, my mind was peaceful again. And, uh, yeah, so I was back to my normal peace. But for a day, I was burning. And within that, I learned. So I really, really completely agree with what Venerable Rohini said today. Just wanted to share my experience. Thank, Thank you, you. And uh, you... Yeah, if you practice more and more, you will realize it more and more. Uh, so practice it, and um, yeah, it is very, very important that actually um, uh, the feedback, that feedback, um, encourage other people. Thank you, Panchani. Yeah. Yes, yes, Panchani. Thank you, Vendrava Rohini. Thank you, Panchani, for sharing that uh, with us. It's very um, encouraging as well as very helpful for everyone in the group. So thank you very much. Uh, I can see Bandula has also raised uh, his hand and Hema Mali. Uh, first, Bandula, do you want to ask your question? And then uh, we'll come to Hema Mali. Thank you, Lishani. Our uh, Sarai, uh, venerable sister. I just want to simply add, uh, I'll uh, totally agree with the uh, Venerable Sister that um, the practice is the main thing uh, because it um, strengthens you and it gives you so much energy to deal with conflicts within you. Um, reference to um, if, uh, if someone blame you or if you're not agree with someone, um, well, so with... The, the practice what I'm trying to do these days, I was just thinking about um, should I uh, try to fix the other person or, or should I uh, look at myself? Say, if, if even if I try to put my opinion and if the other person is not accepting it, so is that person in a bit of a mentally um, turmoil or it's like emotionally work out then there's no point talking to that person so i was thinking um it's better take some time or or just talk to the person later and put your put your uh, 
the weaves or ideas across to him, uh, rather you try to fix the other person. So, and same time, uh, I look at myself because it's opportunity to look at you and how your anger eyes or how you are emotionally working out. So you take it for advantage. Um, so what I'm trying to say, fixing other person is not my responsibility unless uh, it is it is a purpose or it is useful. So otherwise, uh, it's 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 not the it, and it should be the right time. Uh, so thank you, sister. Okay, I agree with you. Actually, there's no right or wrong um, in, in those situations uh, because if you try to correct that person, it might be a more um, complex situation. It might create more complex situations. So the uh, keep silent is sometimes the best. Uh, later on, maybe if the other person is calmed down and uh, if, if the other person is um, in a mood to accept whatever you say, and uh, if it is what you are saying is uh, the truth according to your knowledge, and then at that time you can say. Otherwise, the silence is the best. And uh, look at your mind, look at what you are going through is the best because um, we, uh, we, can't, we can't change other people. Even we can't change myself. I can't change myself. Just to observe is the only thing we can do. Just to observe who am I and accordingly we need to adjust. We need to adjust to the society. So thinking that, my advice is look at the right um, moment to tell someone else their faults. Because if you are talking in the wrong time, that will make um, the situation worse. So yeah, you are doing right. So do that. But it depends on, yeah, like uh, if, you, if that other person is in a danger, then you have to say, um, otherwise, waiting is the best. Thank you, sister. You're welcome. Thank you, Venerable. Um, there's lots of questions and observations today. So, hey, Mamali, it's uh, over to you now. If you want to unmute yourself and then ask your question. Namaste, I don't know. Maybe we need to unmute him a moment. Yes, she can unmute now. Him Mali, I've given you the option of unmuting. Hear me now. Yes. 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 Hear you now. Can yes. you hear me? Yeah. I just want to uh, sh uh, show my experience once I had. Um, I can feel the, the, the anger on the angry person, the hotness, the, 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 the burning sensation of the angry person, and then you can be sympathized on him. I, I feel like that also. Just the solution, Bante. Thank you. Yeah. True, um, because um, once my experience is same uh, while I was in a real life, um, uh, I had a, a, a very rough manager actually. So I look at her like that day, in that day, because he's burning, I can see it. So I have a, that empathy towards her. Uh, so that is one time um, oh, I use. And the empathy, empathy or sympathetic joy or uh, karuna metta, yeah. So you, you, whatever it come, whatever come forward, use it. So that will help to calm. Actually, that it 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 helped me to uh, calm my mind. So it is true. Thank you, Venerable. And thank you, Hemamali. 
Uh, Rajika, you have your hand up. Over to you. Thank you for the, the opportunity, Lushani. Manu, I just want to uh, mention two points. Um, uh, I really appreciate and agree with Manu, like when you said, like, there's no right or wrong thing in this world. Like, I used to, um, you know, argue with people with certain things. Um, uh, those days, but when I heard that uh, the sutta called Nasanti Sutta, and it says, um, uh, Purisasakamo, Sankaparago, Purisasakamo, like uh, people do not um, attach to the outside thing, they attach to their the, um, the sankap, their thoughts. So then once I realize that, if, like, I think what I see, but I think it's right, the other person thinks what he or she thinks is right. So we both argue with the in two different aspects. So there's no point of arguing. So that that's where I realize that uh, there's no point of arguing with someone else because he, her or um, his perspective is different. So it kind of understanding after uh, listening to that sutta, it, it automatically, I lost the interest of having arguments with other people. And the second thing I really appreciate, Manu mentioned about the conflicts we think. And I think that's the my, um, take away uh, uh, in today's talk, um, instead of dealing with outside conflicts, if we, I think uh, today onwards I'll focus on conflicts within myself, within my thoughts, so then... I can't hear you. Can others hear, hear me? Yeah, we can, we can hear you, Rajika. Um, yes. I think Venerable Rohini is probably hearing, I can see she's her screen's frozen. So uh, I think she's dropped out as well yeah, now. Yes, internet. Oh, well, she's back. She's back, Rajika. Continue. Uh, Manu, can... Yeah, yeah Venerable's back. Venerable's back. You, you can continue, Rajika. Yeah, that, Rajika, that... Last part I couldn't hear, Rajika. Uh, yes, Manu, what I said is, like, the I really like the, the thing that uh, Manu talk about, the conflicts we think, like, the... the uh, instead of you know um dealing with the conflicts outside i uh, understanding i have conflicts within myself and dealing with those conflicts is the more important thing that dealing with the outside conflict so that's what i'm taking today from this your talk this program i really appreciate uh, bringing that up to this um, program and thank you very much much merits to you yeah you are right um, because uh, until we we have no view so we have view Yes. So that that make you the trouble. That is the uh, forerunner, the view. So every time I think my view is the right. Every time I think, although my view is wrong, they should not say that like that. So that is the, the sakaditi. Yeah. So if you until you have a samaditi, the no no view uh, time. So you have to. Uh, struggle with um, conflicts within you and the outs with the outsiders as well. So once you deal with your uh, conflicts within you, then it is easy to um, deal with others, actually. That is the truth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Venerable, and thank you, Rajika, for sharing that. Um, Hiranga, I can see you have raised your hand. Go ahead, over to you. I was and I, uh, uh, what I experience is stay calm and just point out what I want to say, my, my thoughts, and just wait until that person fits with and calm down, come to a certain level. That person do understand what I want to say. That's what I experienced, but I didn't lose my inner peace or get shaken with that other person's anger maybe uh, try to provoke me uh, with a smile, wait, waiting, and just observe what, uh, what, uh, that, how, how he changed, how that person changed time to time the, with the conflicts in his mind. And he do realize what I have said and then come back to, and come to the certain good conversation. That's what I expect. Just want to share with him. Thanks. Good. Good. Um, uh, th there are some people like you who um, can deal 
but uh, if you face with the real conflict, uh, just try. Try uh, sometimes the, um, have the conflict. I think we have. I can see when Rupa Rohini is. Uh, so it is not a close friend. There is no any close relation. I think when Rupa Rohini um, should come back soon. Hiranga will give another two, three seconds. She should. Be, I, I can see she's there. Um, when Rupa Rohini, you need to unmute. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, sorry, I want Rohini, we lost you. Lost you a little. So, what if you can just repeat what you were telling Hiranga? Because I think mm -hmm. your internet dropped and we lost you a little. Ben Rupa, can think, you hear? Uh, yeah, I can hear. Um, but I want to delete like that. You know, sometimes we can't. We it depends on the relationship between the other person. So if you are, uh, the, you know, like someone like mine, my my um, close um, friend or close um, relative or a son or daughter, you know, like that, it is not easy. So. Uh, but Hiranga said it's right in certain extent. But some people can deal like that. Uh, I I would like to hear from her. Um, is that improve while she is practicing mindfulness or not in future time? That is improved. This is with my very close uh, relationship in the family. So uh, with the mindful practice, just just I can beginning I can manage and then improve and improve then I can keep my pace and let that be a person calm down and change uh, within himself uh, uh, that himself and calm calm down so that's that's what I experience. Good, good, good to hear. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Very. you. Thank you, Hiranga, for sharing that experience. Uh, Venerable, I have a very similar experience and a question from that. Um, so like Hiranga said, um, usually with mindfulness practice, um, I can see sort of, you know, the, the mind, you know, the thoughts arising. And then as soon as I see it, um, you know, it, it disappears. And so I detach with, with that thought. Uh, and then it just goes away. My question is, now, when it comes to children, particularly, uh, you know, especially if, you know, they need, do I need to guide them to do something wholesome? Uh, so, again, I notice my inner thoughts. Um, and then when I notice it, it disappears. And then I, it, I leave it. It goes away. Now, my my question is, um, I, at the same time, there's an inner, inner thing that says to me that I have a responsibility because just because I'm calm and there's not, no conflict, but is there a responsibility for as a parent for me to guide my child to something wholesome? At which point, how do I address it with them? That's my question. Good question, actually, because uh, that is the the most difficult conflicts within family. I mean, especially parents and um, children. So uh, I don't think um, giving advice is making any conflict. You know, how you give is the uh, important thing. How you deliver it. So uh, I I should say like this. You know, if in my experience, how my husband says while I was in lay life, and to things to my children is completely different from mine. So what how I say is different from him, because um, 
the if you are practiced more and more mindfulness then you can trigger you can you can see or you can feel the right time and right words uh because uh, the making conflict is most of the time uh make that the wrong words wording is the main issue so when you get angry or when you have feeling that inside you uh, yeah, i have to say something i have to say this is wrong i need to say so that that um, boiling thoughts don't give any good word so if you can calm down uh, or you if you can take your mind into your body sensation at that time and you calm down your body then you will find right wording if you deliver right wording i don't think it, there will be any conflicts so even buddha says it whatever you say it should be true although it is truth it should be a good time to deliver even it is a good time if he is not going to accept it don't deliver so when a time come time will come soon or later uh, when uh, he, he or she will accept what you say so just wait because conflict between parents and um, children it go la- you know long last sometimes this is especially with the um, teenagers <laughs> so need to be careful the uh, use your wording in 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 right way and uh, be patient uh, take the right time although it is what you are saying is good for her or him uh, although what you are saying is true uh, but keep in mind that uh, the teenagers or whoever um they, are they are um, ready to listen if they don't if you are wasting word you are wasting your time and making conflict so yeah you need to be you need to be um, mindful as well as um, thoughtful thank you venerable uh, just if i may ask a very quick question leading from that you mentioned that how when you were in your lay life like when your husband would address it differently to you when that situation happens and and you feel your husband's approach is different um what do you do in that situation do you just let it be no it is not approaching me it is approaching it is approaching the child children. Yes. children yes, the same situation that i am that's why i'm asking yeah yeah for example when my daughter is in uh, university so whenever we call her uh, especially when he call her so she is saying okay i am at the gym at the middle of night some like 10 o'clock in the night or so so he is so um, how do you call it's it's not acceptable for him so he is scolding her or something like that so when ever she told me the same thing so i i am not uh, scolding her i'm just saying okay if it is uh, secure enough if you feel um, it's secure enough it's okay so likewise what you even even within me i i have that burning sense you know what is what will happen that is in my in, within me i know that and i can see it but i don't uh, express that um, into words so that is the difference so wording wording thank you thank you very much venerable mm-hmm. uh now man i can see you have a question oh uh, yeah want- apologies uh, venerable many i think i dropped out uh, during my earlier statement i really don't expect a, a particular answer on that just that i wanted to provide a statement uh, saying that uh, uh, with mindfulness practice i was able to develop more options to exercise and choose from at each instance uh, 
compared to previous and i also could uh, drill down and understand the the other issues like the other person's anger or his skill level expertise or his intentions or her uh, intentions in a much wider sc- uh, scope and depth than um, uh, before so that is how it helped me so i felt more confidence uh, much more confidence in me when tackling any issue uh be it from a senior manager parallel colleague or somebody uh, at a lower level in the hierarchy whatever so that's just what i wanted to say i'm sorry i dropped out it's true namanta it's really true because if you are mindful it, it it's a very um, it's have energy that uh, you don't worry about anyone else or you don't uh, afraid of anyone that is that is the power of mindfulness actually yes it is Yes. Mm. Yes, very much money. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um I can see Hiranga has uh, raised her hand as well. Over to you Hiranga. I think today is a very it's become yeah, a very long. Yeah. I have lot to say. I was <laughs> right <laughs> manual. Um what I have experience with the children uh they give a very good um points why why they uh, have a conflict why they don't disagree with me so mm-hmm. if we listen um not my one their one properly uh, we can address that very well they uh, we can say in their words uh, uh, how can they understand what i am saying so that's my experience not always work but sometimes most of the time helps you know what? Uh, thank you yeah the children they, they, they explain uh, their side according to the you know what, what we are you all are in a foreign country so what we still we expect be a sri lankan so so that is the main issue in in these countries so they the children is not agree with that definitely they don't agree with if you come here you need to be a, if you go to the uh, owl's place you need to hang you can ask the um, chairs so they are they are pointing out those um, i think those um, facts so that's why we can't argue with them uh, but it's still uh, if as long as they are safe and uh, they are doing their future in a good way if we, if we can uh, ex- accept in a certain way i don't think uh, we need to argue with them the argument doesn't make any good especially with children if you go uh, argue with them they, they they lose their respect also so if there is a, if there's a point that uh, the conversation being uh, came to a argument level please stop um, that is the best thing thank you venerable and thank you hidanka uh, samantha you have your hand raised yeah just a quick question um uh, <laughs> venerable because i'm um, mindful of the time as well um so basically in a nutshell um what are we saying is that if we are one is mindful and within that silence that moment the answer will somehow come to you how to deal with the situation uh, i am not saying answer will come i am saying mm. answer answer not will come answer you need to mm. find the answer but wording will come and uh, how how to deal um, like you know the uh, if the angry person deal in the same situation is different from a mindful person mm yes i see what you mean the solution yes. you one will find the solution within maybe same solution mm. delivered by the two people one is mindful and mm. the other one is not mindful but in the different way as i told before the wording yes. is different and the, mm. how you uh, the tone is different um yeah there are so many difference between the mindful person and the mindfulness without mindful person so yes. that difference make uh, um not to take you to a conflict situation 
That's what mm. I'm saying. Lovely. Thank you, Venerable. I'll put this to practice now and see yes. what I come up with as well. Thank you. Buddhisarnai. Thank you, Samantha. And uh, so I think that concludes the discussion for today. Uh, Venerable Rohini, thank you so much for your uh, insights and guidance. And it was really nice, I think, also as uh, to hear your experiences as well. And that will really help us in our journey as well. So a lot of merit to you for taking the time to give us this guidance today. Uh, with much gratitude, Venerable Rohini, I will uh, hand now over to Manamantha to conclude the program. And, and a quick thank you to everyone who has shared their experiences and asked questions. Namantha, over to you. Thank you very much, Lushani, and thank you for conducting a long session. And also thank you for all the participants who raised uh, and made the wonderful uh, questions and raised wonderful questions and made wonderful statements. Uh, it really, uh, it took us beyond our normal scheduled time, but I feel it is fine because uh, there was a lot to gain from this uh, session today. And much missed to uh, Venerable uh, Manu for uh, very insightfully uh, providing uh, specific uh, uh, solutions and answers to those questions. So uh, I think uh, we are coming to uh, uh, wrap up uh, to the moment where we will wrap up the program. So uh, Viral Manio uh, was able to uh, uh, join our session today representing Nisaranamane Forest Monastery uh, to provide valued guidance uh, for our uh, journey in mindfulness. So I would like to thank uh, Viral Manio and also share merits with Venerable Manio for joining the session and for all this wonderful contribution today for all of us. Uh, I would also like to uh, thank and mention with much respect the uh, uh, the gratitude towards uh, Venerable Chief Bhante, the Chief Abbot of Nisaramane Forest Monastery, uh, Udai Regama Dhammajiva Mahatero, for insightfully requesting this program to be. And I would also like to thank all the organizers and also uh, Venerable uh, Dhammakusal Thero for uh, initiating and sustaining the program to uh, at, uh, in this um, uh, fashion to today's date and also uh, for keeping um, the good work going on this. And I would also like to thank all the participants who joined through the uh, Facebook live stream of the Satipasala Foundation as well as this uh, Zoom session and uh, wish all of you can uh, uh, progress with in your journeys on mindfulness uh, with the uh, accrued uh, merits and shared merits of this uh, program today. So we would be wrapping up the program and I wish all of you will have a, a very wonderful week ahead with uh, lots of uh, uh, gains on mindfulness practice, advancement on mindfulness practice and we will see you next week at the same time with the similar session on mindfulness um, thank you so much and have a wonderful week ahead thank you i will end the zoom session now